go ahead and get started here. So the first thing I want to talk about is the case of Jonathan Luna now. This is a really weird one, because you think the story's going in one direction, and then it just kind of stops. It's, it's bizarre. So I, I read about this a while back. I don't think I read about it when it first happened, but it was around then. This started in 2003. I remember hearing about it years and years and years before now. But I, I was reminded of it recently, and I was like, oh, I wonder what's going on with that. So Jonathan Luna was this young district attorney. He was assistant district attorney in Baltimore. He was working on a drug case, and he was working on a plea deal for these two defendants. So he's like, okay, you know, let's just go ahead and give him a plea bargain, and let's just get this over with, move on to the next one. It's 2003, it's December 3rd, and at 11 o'clock, he calls up his wife, and he's like, hey, honey, I'm going to be headed home. And she's like, oh, okay, good, you know. He leaves the office. We know he leaves the office at 11.38. The next time he's really seen is at a gas station at 3.30 in the morning. And he walks into the gas station. He buys some water, soda. He buys two tanks of gas, which is kind of weird because I don't know what he would have done with the other tank because he only has one car. But anyways, he appears to be in good spirits. People in the gas station don't really notice anything odd about him. He leaves the gas station. 5.30 5.30 the next morning in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. So this is 95 miles away from his office in Baltimore. People notice a car is kind of like a bit halfway in a creek, a little small creek, a little bubbling water. Blah, 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 blah. So, of course, you know, they're like, oh, might have been a car accident. Let's call the police. So they call the police. Police show up and they see the car. Blah, 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 blah. That's not the car. That's the water by the car. And then they notice there's a body in the water. Half in the water, half out. Cops are like, damn it, it's Monday. Just wanted to be slow Monday. They go in and they retrieve the body. And they're obviously doing ID and they're going through his wallet and they find that it is Jonathan Luna, assistant district attorney in Baltimore. So they're like, ah. Oh. Obviously, they know it's going to be a big case at this point. It's going to be, a, what do they call I think they're called a blue ball. I think that's what they're called. Like, it's just a high-profile case. You have a public government official dead. And obviously, everyone's like, is this connected to a case he was working on? Is someone getting revenge for something else? It was weird that he was 95 miles away from where he was supposed to be. But they start working the case. What they do is they find $200 in cash on him. They find blood in the back seat. They find blood in the back seat. They find blood in the driver's seat. They find blood along the fender of the car. And they find blood on a little toll ticket, which is weird because the car had an easy pass system, which is able to electronically pay for toll roads. And cops are like, oh, I mean, like, this is going to be a weird case, obviously. They start examining the body. He died from having water in his lungs, so he drowned. However... He also had 36 wounds, 36 total stab wounds on his body. His hands were so badly stabbed that when they ended up burying the body, they had to put gloves on him to keep everything together and to not be like totally gross. He had stabs to the neck, slashes to the neck. He got stabbed in the scrotum a couple times. It's pretty intense. So, and he also had stab wounds in the back, like between his shoulder blades. It looked like he was having, you know, having a struggle. He was defending it with his hands. He got stabbed in the back. He got stabbed in the dick. He got stabbed in the throat. Eventually, he fell in the water and drowned. Now, the coroner looked at all that, and he said, okay, cause of death is he drowned, but he has all these stab wounds. We're going to list it as foul play. They started looking, retracing his steps. And one of the first things they realized was that in his office, he had left his cell phone and his glasses, which he needed to drive. So they're like, okay, he must have been kidnapped. If his glasses are here, how would he have driven this far? Now, reportedly, he needed the glasses to drive, but that's the story that we're being told. And then they're like, okay, he uses his easy pass three times. But then after, because he had to take multiple toll roads and bridges to get where he was at. 95 miles, I think it was like three states he went through to get there. They said, okay, so he used the easy pass three times. After that, he started using paper tickets. So people are thinking it could be possible that he was kidnapped and the person who was driving his car didn't know how to use EasyPass, so he began using tickets. 
they have to call the FBI in. So you have the Lancaster County Police working on it. They're calling up Baltimore PD. They're getting the information from the office. But because it was an assistant district attorney, and because the crime took place over several states, they had to call in the FBI. So the FBI comes in. They talk to the Baltimore PD. They get the information from them. They talk to the Lancaster County PD. They're getting all the, you know, taking notes, wearing their trench coats, taking notes. They examine the body. They're like, mm-hmm. Okay, they're doing their investigation. They go, suicide. He obviously killed himself. Case closed. And of course, the police departments were like, what? How? Wait, where did you come to that conclusion? And the FBI goes, well, according to what we've found out, he was $28,000 in debt. He was involved. He was suspected to have stole $38,000 from a case he was working on involving a bank robbery. He was on the verge of being fired. His boss had problems with him. That morning, he got in trouble with a judge involving the case he was working on. That's why he was doing the plea deal that late at night. He had to get it done. He committed suicide. There's no defensive wounds. We believe that he tried to stage a kidnapping and then stage an assault. And as he was cutting himself in the neck, he accidentally cut a carotid artery, fell in the water, and died. Oh, and by the way, coroner, you should change your report to match that. And the coroner was like, "I'm. this was foul play. I'm not changing my report to make this look like a suicide. Six months after his body was found, they did find his pin knife at a rock in the creek where his body was found. That pin knife was used to inflict all 36 wounds on his body. They matched it up to all of them. To this day, the coroner insists it was foul play that he was murdered. And to this day, the FBI says, case closed, it was a suicide. What really happened to Jonathan Luna? Did he try to stage a kidnapping? And was he so at the end of his rope that part of his staging his kidnapping to make it look like he was assaulted was to cut his own scrotum to stab himself in his genitals? That's how far he was willing to go for this ruse. Or was he murdered and either due to sloppy police work or... Something more sinister. Was it classified as a suicide? It's been 15 years since this happened. And there's been no real movement on this case. Bizarre story. Fairly high profile at the time. But as the years have gone on, it's become less and less known. But to this day, nobody really knows what happened to Jonathan Luna. It's just a file sitting somewhere in a coroner's office and a closed file sitting somewhere in an FBI office. And we'll never really know unless something else breaks with this story. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.